The more I try to think about the evolution of my art, the more it becomes stagnant. The more I'm open and the more I just allow tangents to come about, the more I'll venture into those concepts and new creations. It, it's self-governing. Uh, I'm just along for the ride. I'm not here looking for massive public affirmation. Uh, these paintings are a byproduct of me. Every piece in here, whether there's content or not, whether it's a dragonfly, uh, a four directions, buffalo skull, abstract, it's a self-portrait. And I thought for all these years, for centuries and centuries, artists were to be the narratives of society, whether it be biblical scenes, religious scenes, uh, medical scenes, they were the photograph, they were the camera. When the, when the camera came around, you know, all these artists thought, this is great, we're all out of a job. But the Impressionists said, no, we're gonna go one step further. We're gonna give our impression of these things now. It wasn't until uh, the University of North Texas, where I graduated from, when we, we, we took these art history courses, that's when I really started to dive into, you know, what is this abstract all about? Because we're learning about it. How do I apply it? I didn't know it at the time, but when I started to paint these abstracts, due to what I've learned through art history with the Impressionists, I was going to be an artist. Traveling with all, you know, on all the cruises and all the traveling that we've done uh, as a family, uh, heading out west often as a child, I accumulate little things and I came across this trading post. You know, just as an artist, you keep an open mind about, you know, what different surfaces can I paint on? You know, what can I apply, whether it be a totem pole or, or whatever it may be. Um, and I came across this pile of, of, of sun-bleached elk skulls with the racks and, and these, these buffalo skulls. And I, and I, I saw a surface on there uh, it wasn't just the crown of the buffalo, I saw a canvas. There's a great quote by James Bryce, 1888, uh, the West is the most American part of America. And when you think of the West, you think of the animal, you think of, you think of just the wild frontier, and, and I, I think of a buffalo, you, you know, whether it be John Wayne or, or maybe the Henry rifle or whatever it may be. Uh, but in regards to animal-wise, this was the heart and soul of what I think America West is. And this is a beautiful representation uh, of the West. Here, Hunting Thunder, um, what I've done is I've incorporated what I think is a very uh, profound statement in regards to hunting. Uh, when we go hunting, it is not our arrows that kill the buffalo. However powerful the bow, it is nature that kills the buffalo. Big thunder. That's a great outlook. You know, we're all part of nature. There's a saying, it's, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And that application to get to that dragonfly or the headdress or even the abstract shouldn't be so mapped out. I want it to go ahead and to be enjoyable. I know it'll be a dragonfly, but what colors will I use? I don't know until I grab that color. The headdress will be different from each one before, and it may be the blue theme or an orange theme or an earth tone or whatever it may be. Knowing that you have a blank canvas and you're gonna start with a single stroke of color or ink or graphite or whatever it may be, and to know that this is gonna be a blast, that is a wonderful way to make a living. There's no predestination, there's no preconceived colors, there's no applications that I'm thinking about. It's spontaneous and there's just the flow. To me, I think that is the essence. Pure, unadulterated creativity when you can do that. The simplest tool and what I get the biggest kick out of, and I think it's the icing on the cake, and it's a great cake, is either the carbon black acrylic or the carbon black uh, pastel and that, that charcoal. That black pops. It just illuminates off the neons and the colors and just adds that wow factor. So this was an evolution, a byproduct of an evolution of uh, the dragonfly. And I thought, you know, where can I take this even a little bit further, utilizing the technology that we have now? So we have the uh, Dragonfly Lenticular. This is 100 LPI. It's the, uh, it's the state-of-the-art uh, approach to a lenticular. And uh, if you can see, I don't know if the cameras can pick it up, you get a flutter of the, uh, the wings that happen. Uh, it's a piece from the heart, uh, and uh, people enjoy them. Uh, I, I'm very proud of it and uh, I, I think it's uh, turning one of my, my flagship pieces into uh, newer technology and, and you know what, you're only limited by the creativity that you have. I used to think a successful artist would be an artist that uh, shows in multiple museums. He or she is the rock star of the art world and, and I thought that that's where the bar of success for an artist was. And, 
And I realized over the years that that is a few, uh, but it's, it's not for me. To create for a living and make a career out of it is successful. If I maintain this popularity or income or whatever it may be, I'm more than successful uh, for me. I'd rather hang in homes than in museums. Home is where the heart is. Home is where the art is. You know what, I wanna be in people's homes. This is where they live. This is where life happens for these people. This is their dwelling. This is where their children are raised. This is where good times are, bad times, life, death. This is their home. And they only have so much wall space. And your art is there. That's far better, I think, than people standing in line around a block waiting to see your, your exhibit at a museum. Now, that'd be great, but if I had a choice, put me in living rooms, put me in family rooms, hang there, not in a museum.